Well, one of the biggest news stories this week has been the arrival of the American tennis team here to Ireland to play in the Davis Cup. And one of their most celebrated players is John McEnroe, and he's taken a break from his tennis practice to have a few words with us. John, you're very welcome to Anything Goes. First of all, I'd like to present you with one of our sweatshirts, so maybe you might like to wear it sometime anyway, while you're here. Well, it's a good way of starting off, and it's a grand sweatshirt. Great. I'd like to ask you, maybe go back to the beginning of your career. How old were you when you first started playing tennis? Uh, I was about eight and a half years old, and uh, I just, uh, my family moved to courts, uh, a house a couple of blocks away from courts, and just started playing against the wall and playing with my father and stuff. And about six months later, I beat my father, so <laughs> I knew I was, uh, you know, about so age nine. I figured, I think he figured he wasn't going to be a player at that point mm -hmm. when his son beat him at age nine. So. <laughs> was that when you began to take it seriously? Uh, not really. I, I played a lot of other sports uh, when I was growing up, and uh, <clears throat> for all the children watching, I would recommend that because uh, I don't think it's a good idea to really concentrate on the sport at such an early age. I think you need to have fun with it. And uh, you know, I played soccer. I think mm -hmm. they call football here, and played some basketball, and uh, it kept my mind off the sport. It wasn't until really about 18 that I just concentrated solely on tennis. Well, why tennis? Why did you get such a buzz out of tennis, as opposed well, to Well, number sports? one, I was better than that at anything else. That probably made a difference, but uh, just the fact that you're out there by yourself and you either win or lose on your own. And uh, sometimes it is nice to play on a team and, and feel part of a team. That's, that's a good rush also, but uh, when you're out there by yourself and you're able to win and prove something, I think that, you know, for me was, was better than the other one. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously you had natural ability. How important was coaching to you in the early stages? Well, I think it's important to have, uh, you know, an idea what you're doing. I don't think that... Uh, you should just go out there and, and, and hope that, that what you're doing is right because uh, there is there's a lot that needs to be taught, I think, in tennis. There's uh, a lot of basic things that a coach could teach you that's relatively good and I think it would be a good idea. When I was about uh, <coughs> 11 or 12, I went out to an academy where they had a lot of coaches and they taught me uh, mm -hmm. you know, the basic type things. And, and I think you learn and you never forget those things. Well, who's been the biggest influence on your career? Uh, a guy by the name of Tony Palafox, who's <coughs> still my coach now, and uh, he won Wimbledon doubles back in 1963, and uh, he was a Davis Cup player from Mexico, and he uh, settled in New York about 15 years ago or something, and ever since I was 12, he was uh, really the guy that made my strokes the way they are now, and he's been by far the, uh, the, biggest, the biggest influence. Well, what players have you admired most, and have you modeled your style on any of them? Rod Laver was my idol. And, uh, you know, anything he did was great with me. You know, I mm -hmm. tried to be like him, and you try to go out there when I was about 13, 14, and hit balls just like he did. And I think a lot of people do that. I think it's probably a mistake in the long run. You try to ha develop your own style. But, uh, I mean, I think it's, there's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, having an idol or having people you look up to. And uh, he certainly was the uh, number one guy for me. Mm -hmm. Well, what sort of a training practice routine do you have? Uh, probably play like a couple hours a day now. I, I work a lot harder probably now uh, than I used to do when I was younger. I, but, you know, a lot of the other players play more than I do. You know, some people need more practice than others, I think. And, and I need to keep my mind fresh. I like the competition and playing in the tournaments and uh, playing matches more than I like to go out there and just practice. Practice for me is like a means to an end. And, uh, you know, for other people, they feel that they need to go out there for extra hours in order to perform at the same level. Uh, on the, in the matches, and I feel that uh, I just need to go out there to get ready for the matches. Mm -hmm. Well, is batting a ball up against a wall of any use? <laughs> to, well, most kids start off batting Bang balls your head against, against the wall. The wall. Yeah, well, maybe you're banging your head. Is it of any use at all? Uh, I think it'd be better if they played in a, you know, maybe it would be better if they got some more courts in, the, in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, hopefully in the future they'll get some more indoor facilities, because it's probably real important at some stage in a, in a person's career to, uh, you know, be able to play year-round if the opportunity presents itself. Okay. And uh, I think it's very difficult for uh, someone that can't play year-round or has to just play against a wall in like 30 or 40 degree weather to, uh, you know, really become a top player. Mm -hmm. Well, in Ireland we haven't really produced any players of international significance. and. Players like yourself, Irish Americans like yourself, have reached the top. Do you think it's more than natural ability that facilities and coaching have a lot to do with being a world champion tennis player? No, I don't think there's any question about it. You know, you know, we have more indoor courts in, uh, you know, my town than they do in the whole country. 
you know, in my town's you know, a small place or whatever, so. You know, we have two indoor courts now where I live, like a block from my house, that have been up for like, you know, years and years. Mm -hmm. And you need to have that option. And, uh, you know, England is just getting around to it now where they're starting to build some more indoor facilities, and it'd be very helpful here, too, if, you know, hopefully by me playing Davis Cup here and, and the United States coming, uh, it will spark some more interest in the game because, uh, you know, I think it's a great game, and, uh, and I don't think that uh, Ireland's really that far out of the way. You know?